African-born journalist Lerato Mbele is joining me in studio. Now, Lerato presents the Africa Business Report on BBC World. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's great to see you. You're in Cape Town. Are you enjoying your time here? I am. The weather is a little bit rubbish, but, you yeah. know, the, it's so scenic that we can <laughs> forgive the weather. <laughs> all the rain, all the sleet, all the wind, uh, and it's just been a relaxing time for me and my family. Awesome. Well, we're glad you're enjoying it, minus the weather. Um, we want to talk about you as a person. Now, you started your career here in South Africa at the SABC. Then you went off to London and you've reported all over. What um, is it different reporting in London from South Africa? What are the differences? I wouldn't isolate South Africa from London, mm -hmm. for instance, but I would definitely say there's a clear distinction between yeah. local broadcasters and international broadcasters. Mm -hmm. For one thing, the BBC is a 24-hour news machine. Yeah. So we're always churning stories, refining them, adapting them, refreshing them, um, moving the news agenda forward. So you really have to be kept on your feet. You really have to be sharp. You really have to be comprehensive and really understand the story that you've been assigned to. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you work for a local broadcaster, you are part of a news team that either hosts the news bulletin at 7 p.m., at 10 right. p.m., or the 1 o'clock news. So you've got a little bit more time to conduct research, to interpret the facts, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, to be more calm and relaxed as you approach a story. But I would say that having started my career in South Africa, the South African media generally mm -hmm. is quite thorough, mm -hmm. investigative and probing. And I think those are the tools that have really helped me on my journey at the BBC, except the BBC is a lot more challenging and a lot more demanding. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it's not just demanding in terms of understanding the news content, refining the news content, moving with the story mm -hmm. as it moves, breaking the stories if need be. It also means you've got to be flexible enough to travel for the story if you yeah. have to. Yeah, well, we all know here that being a journalist isn't an easy job. It's quite stressful. How do you deal with the stress, especially in the reporting you do? I imagine it's quite... Fortunately, as a specialist business mm -hmm. and economics presenter, it's not as harrowing as doing news. Mm -hmm. I'm not covering airplane Breaking crashes, news. wars, right. and refugees. Mm -hmm. And I think to that extent, it's a godsend because... It just means my sensibilities and sensitivities are not peaked. Um, but it is grueling in the sense that Africa at the moment is this new growth frontier. People are very curious about what's going on on the African continent, the business and economic opportunities that exist. And so it does mean crisscrossing the continent to get a more authentic feel mm -hmm. of what's going on. Statistically, there's growth. Statistically, poverty is being dented. Statistically, um, there's investment, but it's only once you're on the ground do you know whether the statistics have meaning to the lives of ordinary men and women. So you've got to be there in the thick of things. And that's when it's really challenging. But you know, when you've got a good team, mm -hmm. it makes it easier to carry the load. When you've got a supportive family, you feel less guilty about traveling extensively. And when you've got viewers who appreciate what you're doing, mm -hmm. then it gives you a sense of purpose. And those things are the things that make it easier for me to cope. Now, on, on that note, in an era where everyone seems to care about the Kardashians yeah. and, and they're really on top of, of the tabloid celebrity news, how, how do you make your show business and economics yeah. how, re relevant, or not relevant, we know why it's relevant, but how do you make the everyday person want to watch that, how excited about that? Can I just say, mm -hmm. I quite like the Kardashians. And my favorite is <laughs> Chloe. Chloe is the best <laughs> Kardashian, it's true. You know, she's she feisty, she's fiery. Yeah. I quite like her personality. Okay, so given an option, so I'm you can watch. like both. You can like you both. You can like both. I think what we realized um, a few years ago, especially after the 2008 credit crisis, mm -hmm. when people's pensions were decimated and the, their values dropped by 50%, I mean, that impacted my own mother because yeah. she was retiring in that year and everything she'd ever worked for, saved for, 
was literally wiped out by a financial crisis. Wow. And so it's at that moment that business and economics stops being esoteric high finance right. and starts being the reality that we all live. And now we're post-credit crisis, post-recession, but we're still talking about unemployment, jobs for young people mm -hmm. graduating from university, economic growth, economic policy. These are the bread and butter issues because everybody wants the right or the privilege rather, I think, to work. Everybody wants to be able to earn an income. Everybody wants to be able to pay their bills. Everybody wants to be able to, you know, to keep on keeping mm -hmm. on. And when the economy doesn't allow you to do it, it stops being something far away. It stops, it starts being something very that real. And because we're living in that mold, mm -hmm. in South Africa alone, uh, an economy that's sticky, stuck at about 1.9%, threats of the economy probably going into recession. Mm -hmm. um, retrenchments and job cuts en masse, all of a sudden economics is not something over there, it's yeah. something over here and in here. And when it becomes that, we become very relevant as Africa Business Report and indeed as BBC Global Business News.